So I named the title of this video, The Art of Dumping. And what I wanna do was kind of take a look at some misconceptions between what is dumping on somebody, who are we dumping on, and of course, what is taking profits and who are we taking profits from? So of course, today we're looking at a very big green day. Everybody's happy, ecstatic. I'm happy, I like green days. And uh, we see that Bitcoin briefly touched 30,000 before uh, taking uh, a little bit of a, of a dip, which is healthy. And uh, of course, everything else is uh, up across the board. We're looking at uh, a, a 1.1 1, 1 trillion market cap somewhere around there. And uh, I think one of the reasons is because, first of all, uh, Gary Ginsel and the SEC just took another court case loss. And they had to take that L. Uh, this is from uh, Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse from Ripple as they uh, revoked or took out their plea. Uh, the SEC to continue on to sue Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson from Ripple. And now we have to wait for a final ruling before we can move forward. So again, that's another L that they, they've they lost on top of the other loss they took against Ripple and on top of also the recent one with Grayscale as Grayscale tries to take their Bitcoin trust and turn it into a, a Bitcoin spot uh, ETF. Now, there is that piece. Also, there was a video that was just released a couple of days ago where Gary seems uh, uh, quite affectionate towards Bitcoin ETFs and not so staunch in his position, where he opens up the room to say that, yes, we're looking at uh, eight to 10 different ETFs and uh, we'll go through the process. And there was no mention of any kind of, uh, of tomfoolery or any kind of uh, different issues that they might have as far as mismanagement, manipulation, which would be the big one he always talks about. No reference to that at all in that video. So people are very bullish saying the ETF will be approved. Now, that's what's going on today. I will just caution everybody. We take a look at live coin watch. You can see that as far as like the volume today, it's not a ton. It's up a little bit. It's 35 billion roughly. But just remember, like that's the same volume we had on September 12th. This is on August 17th. We had much more volume. So even though that, yes, it is a green day, just be careful out there because there's not a ton of volume, which doesn't take a lot to move the market right now. And that is exactly what's going on. So the question that, uh, that has been coming up is, okay, so if we're going to talk about dumping, what is that? Dumping is very simple. It's somebody who is, has no scruples, essentially, and is telling you to buy, 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 buy. There is nothing behind the project itself, and they dump on you, and they say buy. Thank you so much, sucker, and off you go. Now, there's a huge difference between dumping and taking profits. If you'd like to learn some of the things that I'm trying to do as far as uh, the indicators I look for to when I am selling my crypto, there's a link in the description. And you can see this video. It's where I'm selling 80% of my crypto uh, moving forward. Again, I dollar cost average in. I dollar cost average out. It's not very sexy, but I will tell you this. It is a safer way to do things for me, and that's what I'm doing. I can't give you financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Check out that video, links in the description. So then the question becomes, okay, well, what is it? What is a real pump and dump? Can we define that? So this is very simple. Pump and dump, scams, they are scams, which in crypto, we love to use this word, involve artificially inflating the price of an asset through false and misleading positive information. There's a huge difference between talking about a project that you absolutely believe in and you think that is going to do very well and you have data that supports that as opposed to just going, you know what, this is the new meme coin, it's going to be awesome, and there is a, uh, a partnership with the U.S. government, and it's going to be fantastic. Okay, that's a lie. And if you're pumping on those type of things, and then, of course, you have a, a, a big bag of that, and then, again, at the very bottom, you say, or the very top, you say, thanks so much, suckers. That is a legal pump and dump, and you can't do that. Now, there has been some speculation about that might have been happening with Cointelegraph as they put out this information. Cointelegraph, don't sue me. But this is just a rumor. There is nothing substantiated. And this was from just a couple of days ago with the SEC. They said the SEC approves iShares Bitcoin spot ETF reportedly. So if they had not knowingly done that, that's false information. And if somebody had put in some type of, I don't know, a long position or they wanted to short uh, these, these different positions that are out there, uh, however they would do that and then have a lever position, they could have made a killing in this situation, if they had done that, I'm not saying they did, I'm just saying this would be a prime example of a pump and dump. So there's a, there's a difference between the art of dumping or dumping on somebody because it's a pump and dump and as far as like taking profits. Again, when I'm talking about taking profits, it's like some people, they, 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 they feel like I don't wanna take profits because then you know there's, this is a zero sum game and not everybody's gonna win. And everybody's, for some reason, tends to believe that when they take profits, there's some little old lady, there's a grandma 
that is uh, buying up all these, these, these cryptos. And she is the one that is, uh, you know, putting in her social security check. And she is the one that you are essentially dumping on or taking profits as you take profits along the way. And I got to tell you, it's not the case. Here's what it is. When you sell your crypto, and I'm not saying there's not a grandma out there who is buying a bag. That's ridiculous. However, the vast, vast, vast majority are people like this. That's Peter Thiel, fantastic investor, inventor of PayPal, big Bitcoin advocate. And a couple of years ago, he was at the uh, Bitcoin conference, 2022. And on stage, he went up there and said, you know what? Uh, this Bitcoin is fantastic. We are, and I will quote, as he was up there, we are at the end of the fiat money regime and suggested his price, which was trading at above 44,000, could increase by a factor of 100. The funny thing is, though, is that that was in April of 2022. And in March of 2022, his fund sold out the vast majority of his entire crypto portfolio. Now, is that illegal? It would have been illegal if he would have tried to pump the price and done that, but he had already dropped it. And here, it's just a gray area where he says, no, 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 you know, I, I think it's this, or I think it's that, I think it's gonna do really well. Uh, but 95% or whatever it was, we already got rid of later, which I don't think he said that on stage. Matter of fact, I know he didn't say, say that on stage. So when we're talking about these, these people that you, you know, we're, oh, we're dumping on them or we're taking profits, it's a lot of these people. And to prove my point, this is the August 3rd, 2023 shareholder letter from Coinbase. And I need to, to understand that even though Coinbase talks a lot to the retail, and of course, that's uh, their prime motivator, especially for the fees, it's not the people who are trading. And there are two very important metrics I'd like you to note. And that is the total revenue. The total revenue for Coinbase. And again, this was released in August of 2023. You can see here that consumers, the net, the transaction revenue, the revenue of all transactions, and we'll take Q2 2023, is 310, that's in millions. The revenue that they got from consumers, that's us, is 310 million. I got no problems with them doing that. I'm, that's, that's a business, free market, great. Institutions, they only got the uh, total revenue of 17 million. You're like, well, that's kind of weird. Is our institutions not buying a lot? Is what's going on? And then I will just make a quick note that uh, the interest income is the majority of where they get their revenue, and that's 201 million. That's interest. So that could be their stable coins, USDC. That could be things that they actually stake. Correct me in the comments section. But that's the vast majority of where their revenue actually comes from. Well, on top of that, on top of consumers. Again, I got no problem with that. Now I want you to take a look at the trading volume. This is what we're moving around. This is what we're trading. And of course, the majority of what we're trading is Bitcoin, Ethereum for the vast majority of what we're talking about here. Note, note this, trading volume is in billions. Consumers, Q2 2023, 14 billion. Institution, $78 billion. That's the trading volume. Well, that's weird, Rob. Why, why is the revenue from the transactions so low but yet they have such a high trading volume. It's because they're the institutions, they get fantastic deals and they're the ones that are moving things around. And they are the ones that probably are buying OTC and do a lot of things. And that's just how it is. Us consumers, we don't get those breaks. And that's the name of the game. So again, when you think that you're like, well, am I, am I dumping on, on this, this poor sweet grandma as I'm selling my bags because I've been holding for three or four years diligently when everybody told me to diamond hands. No, that's not it. Usually what it is is institutions. And I will remind you that they got some big ones. BlackRock, which of course they will be doing the custody for that spot ETF whenever that rolls out. Andreessen Horowitz and A16Z. Grayscale, One River, Swiss Co, Brex, Compound, BitPay, Bit excuse me, just to name a few. So we have all that, but what about, Rob, what about the people, the small individuals out there that I'm taking profits on and I'm dumping on them? Again, big difference between dumping and taking profits. First of all, Thanksgiving's coming up pretty soon. This is what you're going to see. And uh, the people that never talk to you anymore about crypto is because it's in the toilet. And they're the ones that are like, ah, you know, Johnny, it's just messing up left and right. 
and he keeps investing in this crypto and look how much is down 90, 90, 95% or something like that. That's the faces you're going to see at Thanksgiving. And heaven forbid, if you had anybody, had any, had any of them invest in a certain things, they're like, Hey, my portfolio is down 95% jerk. What's going on? Look, that is the name of the game. As far as investing, make sure that you tell them next time that look, investments are risky and you should never, never invest more than you can afford to lose. You get the price of Bitcoin and crypto at the price you deserve and no more and no less. So for all the people that were making fun of you and something like that, I have to be honest with you. I have no problems dumping on those people and taking profits. And then lastly, I will just say that as far as like, as far as globally, of course, I'm in the, in the States. I can't speak to everybody you know, throughout the entire globe, but uh, this is from AAA and uh, this is their for their reports and surveys were included, included and weighted to our final numbers. Uh, FCA, UK, Payments, PMSY, Finder, Russia, Gallup Poll, University of Cambridge, Crypto.com, Bank of America, Gemini. So they got a lot of different data points. And what I'm trying to show here is that this is how much crypto is actually out there. This is actually from 2022. It's maybe a little bit more right now, but over 420 plus million crypto owners worldwide. There's roughly 8 billion people in the world. So we're looking at less than 5% of the people actually have it. And the majority is in uh, North America. And if we just take a look at the United States, again, from the same website, and people say, well, I don't want to dump on anybody that's, you know, or take profits from somebody. Look, 60% of people that are investing into crypto in North America, United States, uh, have a average income of 75,000 and more. So I can understand where some people are like, I don't really want to do this, but in all honesty, come on. At some point you have to take profits and you have to move along. And again, you get Bitcoin and crypto and digital assets at the price you deserve. And that's it. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That is it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.